What's up, guys? It's MB Boxing. I just finished up watching Sebastian Fendora versus Carlos Ocampo, and this was a 12-rounder for the interim WBC Super Welterweight World Championship, and this fight was Saturday, October 8th from the Dignity Health Sports Park in Carson, California, and this fight was broadcasted on Showtime, and in this fight, Sebastian Fendora was able to get a very odd, wide, unanimous decision victory over Carlos Ocampo. I thought this fight was very, very close, and I had it a draw. I had it 114-114. There was a lot of very close and tough rounds to score in this fight. But I'm just going to read off the judges' scorecards for this fight. Um, they had it 119-109 for Fundora, which is horrible. They had a 118-110 for Fundora, which is also awful. And they also had a 117-111 for Fundora, which is also a terrible scorecard. I think all three of those scorecards are disgusting. Ocampo did very, very good early on. Later on, it was more Fundora, but early on, it was all Ocampo. And, I mean, if you watch this fight, comment down below who you scored, or if it's just me who thinks these judges are delusional. I definitely think that it was either a draw or more swayed close in favor of Fundora, like a 115-113. Um, maybe, just maybe, a 116-112 for Fundora, because there was a lot of close rounds in this fight. And just to break down my scorecard and how I viewed the fight, I thought that the first round was clear for Ocampo. He landed much better body work, uh, or he had much better body work and just much more activity than Fundora in the first round, and he clearly won it. Same was in round two. He had much better work, um... And then Fendora, but Fendora landed some jabs, but it wasn't really enough. I thought Fendora, or I thought Fendora was just wasn't doing enough, and Ocampo was just coming forward and landing the better shots to the body. However, round number three, that was also a very clear round for Ocampo. Uh, Ocampo landed some beautiful left hooks to the head of Fendora, flush. I mean, I mean flush shots. Ocampo was just landing big flush left hooks that round, and he clearly won that round. Then round four, this was a very, very close round that I thought personally could have went either way. Um, both of them had excellent work in the on the inside. And the thing is, the first three rounds were fought with Fendora boxing on the outside, and he didn't really have much success. But then from the fourth round on, up until the last couple rounds, um, it was all just an, a very fun inside Rock'em Sock'em rock sock Robots type of fight. So in that fourth round, both of them were exchanging on the inside, but I thought that the slightly more like exciting and eye-catching flush shots were from Ocampo, but Fundora was landing some very nice short uppercuts on the inside, so it could have definitely went Fundora's way. But then in round number five, it was also a very close round, but um, I thought that Ocampo just had the better shots later on in the round. And in the exchanges, I thought that Ocampo was just landing the bigger, like, flush or more eye-catching shots, just like in that fourth round. But Fundora, yet again, was still having very good work on the inside. So that those are two rounds right there that could have definitely went in favor of Fundora. But then in the sixth round, um, there were some big shots from Fundora that sort of backed up Ocampo. That was, like, the first round where Ocampo started to look a bit hurt. Um, but, uh, I mean, the only thing was... Um, after that sixth round, even though Ocampo did look a little bit shaken, he was still, like, on his feet. It didn't look like he was, like, on his way out. It just looked like he was getting a bit bothered by the shots. Um, but then in round number seven, uh, although Ocampo did have some pretty bad body language, like, I'm just gonna be honest, he did, I, I still thought he landed the much better shots than Fendora, so I gave him that round. Like, I'm not going to just give the round to Fendora just because Ocampo is unorthodox and all over the place. Ocampo was throwing big shots and landing big shots in that round, so that's why I gave Ocampo that round. Then in round number eight, uh, I thought that Fendora just had the better and sharper shots on the inside, mainly those short uppercuts and hooks. And the thing is, Fendora, I don't really think, had worked too well on the outside. I, he's tried it in this fight, and it, he just didn't work too great. The inside is really his game, and that's where he really has most of his success, especially in this fight. If he fought on the outside, he probably would have lost this fight on points, or on the judges' scorecards, 100% not, but on most of the fans' scorecards, probably, he would have been down on points. But then, um, yeah, in round number 9, that was also a very, very close round that I could have... Uh, like I, that it could have went either way uh it was very similar to like rounds four and five where they were exchanging very good on the inside but i thought that yet again ocampo was doing very well with his left hooks over the top and fendor just wasn't seeing them because ocampo would go right hand to the body then big left hook over the top and um yeah even though it was a very close round fendor had some very good work on the inside as well i edged it slightly to ocampo but then in round 10, 
Fendora was coming forward as well again. He just landed the way better shots than Ocampo. Ocampo was a bit tired in that round. And in those later rounds, what really disgusted me was how Jack Reese, although usually he's a great referee, I mean, this fight, it, it was just disgusting, his performance. Even though Ocampo was in the fight, the unofficial scorecard at the point of when Jack Reese was saying all this stuff, he went into Ocampo's corner and was saying, you got to continue fighting or I'm going to stop the fight. And it looked like he was almost going to stop the fight because you could hear the audio on Showtime. Jack Reese or someone was saying, it's, the fight's over, going into one of the rounds. But then it, it ultimately went through. I just don't know what happened. That's what I heard with my own ears. But, I mean, it was just a very, a very odd turn of events in those sort of later rounds. But the unofficial scorecard, after like 10, had it 96-94, for Fendora, they had it a very close fight, and I had a 96-94 for Ocampo, and um, after like seven rounds, even when they were talking about um, stopping the fight then, and when the referee was going in his corner then, they had Fendora up by a point, they had it a very close fight, um, so really, it was a very close fight throughout my opinion, but then in those last two rounds, 11 and 12, rounds 11 and 12 were clear for Fendora, Fendora just boxed on the outside and was just out jabbing, and just outworking Ocampo, and he won those rounds pretty clearly. Specifically round 11, he boxed a lot more. And round 12, he boxed in the first half, but then the second half, he came forward and just outworked Ocampo. So yeah, I, I scored this fight a draw yet again. If you watch this fight, comment down below how you scored it, because I'm very interested to see if I was the only one who really had it a very, very close fight. But uh, definitely, I mean, the, I could definitely see why Fendora won. I'm not mad that Fendora did win, uh, but I'm mad at the judges' scorecards because 119-109 is just disgusting. I think that is a horrible scorecard. Uh, same with 118-110 and 117-111. I think those are all garbage scorecards, to be 100% honest. So this goes into the question, what is next for Sebastian Fendora? Picking up this win over Ocampo. Many people, myself included, almost every single person was picking him to stop Ocampo. Ocampo showed a lot of heart. He showed that, I guess, that Errol Spence Jr. fight, he's grown a lot from it. Um, now 154. Obviously had a very good fight with Fendora. But for Fendora, he defended his interim title here. He's really the mandatory challenger in the WBC for the world title, being that he's obviously the interim champion next in line. Um, so, Jermall, or, or should I say Jermel Charlo, the undisputed world champion, is scheduled to face Tim Zhu in, I believe, the beginning of 2023, I think like January, maybe, somewhere around there, I think it is. Um, not 100% sure on the exact date, but I know it's in early 2023. So, I think that Sebastian Fendora, if he's not going to fight another fight um, before maybe he gets a full world title shot, I think that he will fight the winner of Jermel Charlo versus Tim Zhu. Uh, if, Jermel Char if Jermel Charlo obviously loses, they'll probably do a rematch clause or something like that, maybe. There's definitely probably a rematch clause in their contract. But um, saying that Jermel Charlo wins, obviously it'll be Jermel Charlo versus Sebastian Fendor for the undisputed championship of the world. But um, if he does not fight the winner of Jermel Charlo versus Tim Zhu in his next fight, maybe he could take on someone around this level of Ocampo, like top 15, um, in the super welterweight division, get a pretty solid win, and then he could go on and maybe fight the winner of that fight in uh, the near future. But as for Carlos Ocampo, like I said, he really surprised me. I scored this fight a draw. He really showed a lot of heart, heart determination, fought very hard, and really tried in every single round. Almost every single round was very competitive, aside from some of those later rounds where Fendora won them clearly, uh, where Ocampo was a bit tired. But um, nonetheless, he definitely did not lose 11 rounds in this fight, or 10 rounds, or 9 rounds. Um, but yeah, I think in his next fight, he'll take on some lower-ranked guys in Mexico, maybe get his record beefed up to, uh, like, 37-2, and two before maybe stepping it up back in competition, taking on some guys, like, in the top 20, top 25, and just building up his resume even more. So, overall, Sebastian Fendora gets a very wide, um, unanimous decision courtesy of the judges over Carlos Ocampo. I personally thought this fight was a draw, but I thought this fight, nonetheless, was very, very close. Um, but yeah, Sebastian Fendora stays unbeaten now at 20-0 and successfully defends his interim WBC Super Welterweight World title. And yeah, that's really it. I'm MB Boxing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.